Hi all welcome to today's class hope you might have watched the previous video the previous video i had already given the explanation of first 50 lines of matplotlib no and i am giving the link of the previous video in the comment box so if you have not watched please do watch it and then watch this in this video we are going to discuss lines 51 to 100 now the aged flecno imagines his son's coronation so we know that this is all flecno's imagination and not at all reality he is imagining the day of his son shadwell's coronation as the king of the kingdom of dullness flecno here start visualizing shadwell holding the volume of his own compositions in his threshing hand sometimes as prince of thy harmonious band the wheels thy papers in thy threshing hand so as we all know that here the aged father flecno is imagining the day of his son shadwell's coronation the kingdom of dullness and he imagines his own son shadwell appearing on the stage holding his own volume of compositions in his own threshing hand here he has used the adjective threshing threshing we know it is an act that is a rhythmic hand movement easily reminds one of beating or threshing grains from husk separating grains from husks and he has deliberately used this adjective threshing in order to make fun of shadwell's own compositions in the next line he says that saint andrew's feet never kept more equal time nor even the feet of thy on psyche's rhyme though they in number as in sense excel so just so like tautology they fell even saint andrew saint andrew here it is a reference to the famous french choreographer who choreographed shadwell's on 1675 opera named psyche even saint andrew the famous french choreographer's feet never kept equal time like the feet of shadwell's psyche feet of shadwell psyche here means feet reference to the metrical feet the rhythm here dryden make use of the literary device named pun p u n on the word feet referring to the feet of saint andrew as well as the metrical feet of the rhyme scheme of his opera psyche just like shadwell's customary tautology they too collapsed you see of course shadwell have produced a number of works absurd works but the thing is that though they excel in number there is no use because just like your customary tautology your repetition constant repetition unnecessary repetition they too your works too have collapsed that pale with envy singleton forswore the mute and sword which he in triumph bore and vowed he would never act villarious more even the jealous singleton singleton here the reference to john singleton he was a court musician and singer even the jealous singleton swore his lute swore by his lute and sword and made a vow that he shall never act the role of villarious now we know who we can look who villarious is and villarious is a character in william davenan 1656 tragic comic opera entitled the sage of rots and villarious was a knight and the grand master of rots and one more important thing regarding this the siege of rods it is considered to be the first english opera so here dryden says that even singleton became jealous of shadwell on his dullness or foolishness so this envious singleton he made a vow that he shall no more play the role of villarious for shadwell in all his dullness and stupidity is the only man fit for that particular job and everyone else is just coveting for a second place all arguments but most his plays persuade that for anointed dullness he was made and all his works all of shadwell's works once again confirm that he is ordained for writing absurd plays he is ordained or he is anointed dullness he was made for now the aged flecno is in search of an apt place for his son's coronation and he finds a place in fair augusta or london here once more london is described as or referred as fair augusta close to the walls which fair augusta bind the fair augusta much to fears inclined here once again london is referred to augusta here fair augusta is portrayed as in a state of fear for during this time owing to the so called popish plot a popish plot is a reference to a case of conspiracy 
in the year 1678 uh, which is considered to be a fictitious but believe that it was planned by the jesuits to assassinate king charles ii in order to bring his own catholic brother the duke of york to the throne so the fair augusta much to fears inclined that fears inclined that is a reference to that situation that is prevalent during that time so flecknoe has found an apt place that is within the walls of fair augusta near the walls of london there once stood a barbican and a watchtower but now it is nothing but a pile of ruins there stood of yore and barbican its height a watch tower once but now so fate ordains of all the pile and empty name remains from its old ruins brothel houses rise scenes of lewd loves and of polluted joys so he has found the right place and it is near the walls of london there once stood a barbican barbican here is a reference to a defensive fortification uh, which is now nothing but a pile of ruins and and there was a watch tower too but now it is nothing but a pile of ruins a place of polluted joy now there exist brothel houses where mothers trumpets mothers trumpets here refers to mother prostitutes rule and also there is a nursery attached to that place nursery here refers to a training place or a birth place for many a queens and heroes of future and this nursery is where brothel kids learn to be actors especially the roles like that of maximin maximin here it is a character refers to a character in dryden's on work tyrannic love here he has used an ironic tone and puns you know here puns it is a reference to prostitutes so this is the well known place where flecno designs shadbell's throne great fletcher never trends in buskins here nor greater johnson dares in socks appear but gentle simkin just reception finds amidst this monument of vanished minds so this is the well known place where the great writers like fletcher and ben johnson shall never enter here we can see there is an allusion to the writers john fletcher and ben johnson he says that dryden indirectly says that the place of johnson and fletcher won't be staged here never think that neither johnson nor fletcher's place will be staged here but the dull and shoddy place of shadbell may find a ready audience here john fletcher we know he is this a reference to the early 17th century playwright who was famous for his tragedies so great fletcher never treads in never enter here wearing his buskins buskin that is reference to the boot long boot worn by actors in tragedy so this both buskins and great fletcher stands an example for metaphor as well as metonymy we know metonymy that is a part representing the whole so here great fletcher is used to indicate great fletcher's volumes of tragedies so great fletcher it is an example of the use great fletcher is an example and ben johnson is also an example of metonymy also buskins also represent the tragedies the association of buskin is a reference to tragedy in short but he says that the dull and shoddy place of shadwell may find a ready audience here even simkin simkin here is a reference to the role played by a fool and simkin a fool may get a great reception amid the monuments of vanished minds amid the monument of vanished minds pure clinches the sub suburban muse efforts and pant and waging harmless war with words here flegno as a place to fame well known ambitiously designed his shadwell throne and panton it is a reference to the famous punster punster means a person who is fond of making puns or reference to a person who wrote worthless plays or works literary works so in short dryden says that this place where the one flecknu has chosen for his son's coronation is a place for mere fools and punsters who wage harmless war with words and it is not suitable for staging ben johnson's or fletcher's plays here only shoddy plays of fools shall get a ready audience so that is the right place so here flecknu the aged flecknu has found a place for shadwell strong and flecknu says that he cannot find a better place than this for shadwell's coronation 
it is the best one for here for ancient decker prophesied long since that in this pile should reign a mighty prince born for a scourge of wit and flail of sense there is a reason for saying that that flecknoe cannot find a much better place than this for shadwell's coronation because there was a person called thomas decker thomas decker is a reference to a minor english writer uh, who constantly fell victim to ben jonson's satire poet aster and ben jonson often criticized him in his work poet aster thomas decker is a minor english writer so here the reference is of thomas decker he says that dryden says that thomas decker once prophesied that a prince without wit shall reign this place for ancient decker prophesied long since long time ago that in this pile that means in this pile of ruins shall one day a mighty prince a numbered prince a mighty prince shall reign and now flecknoe is sure that decker's prophecy was all about his son shadwell the prince in whom the true dullness alone dwells the true representative of dullness and shadwell's own place like the psyche the miser the humorist and the hypocrite stands a testimony to the above mentioned here psyche is a reference to shadwell's own opera and the miser the humorist the hypocrite are placed by shadwell raymond it is a character in shadwell's own play the humorist bruce is a character from his own play the virtuoso now flegno imagines the day of coronation so flegno has already found a place an apt place a right place for his son's coronation and now he is imagining the act of coronation the ceremony of coronation so it is time for coronation now empress fame has published the renown of shadwell's coronation through the town empress fame is publishing the account of shadwell's fame throughout the nation now empress fame is assigned the task of publishing the account of shadwell's coronation and here aroused by report of fame the nations meet from near bun hill and distant watling street no portion carpet spread thy imperial way but scattered limbs of mangled poets lay so empress fame is publishing the account of shadwell's coronation and here he says that dryden says that shadwell's fame stretches from bun hill reference to two places bun hill to the distant watling street it is indeed an ironic statement the reason is that for these places are hardly distant at all that is bun hill and watling street and still he has used the statement that from near his fame stretches from bun hill to the distant watling street and the irony is that these two places are not at all distant and this ironic statement shows the narrow limits of shadwell's influence no persian carpet spread thy imperial way but scattered limbs of mangled poets lay and there are no persian carpets luxurious persian carpets lining the street or the walkway but scattered limbs but these but the floor is lined by scattered limbs of mangled poets here once again we can see that dryden has used metonymy scattered limbs is reference to the representative representative works of poets mangled poets here means what mangled poets here means minor poets poets like haywood shirley ogilby and lords of shadwell almost chalked to be so from dusty shops neglected authors come martyrs of pies and relics of the bum pies here is a reference to the bakers using book pages under pie crust relics of the bum here reference to the book pages used as toilet paper bum refers to something that is obscene and uh, ogilby here it is a reference to john ogilby a british printer translator and a minor poet so here dryden says that the walkway is not lined by luxurious persian carpets but it is lined by or lined with scattered works scattered pieces of books from minor writers like haywood shirley ogilby and much of shadwell the floor of the walkway is lined with scattered limbs of mangal poets and here scattered limbs is an example of metonymy so let us wind up today's class with shadwell's imaginary coronation and we can deal with lines 102 to 151 in the next class so thank you so much for listening and watching